Hi guys, I'm Eileen. Today, I want to share with you my most and least used luxury handbags. You guys know I don't have a huge collection, so I do rotate my bags fairly frequently. But there are still a few bags that I've not been reaching for all that much. On the other hand, there are some bags that I've been using quite a lot. So I thought I'll make a video about that. Before I share these bags with you guys, I just want to share with you two new pieces of jewelry from Ana Luisa. The first ones are these beautiful earrings I'm wearing today. I love earring pieces that come with earring jackets. I have a pair of earrings from Vita Fate with quite similar design and I've been wearing them a lot. So when I saw these on the Ana Luisa website, I knew I had to have them. So like many other jewelry pieces from Ana Luisa, these earrings are gold plated as well and the earring studs are made of freshwater pearls. The jackets say love, which I think is so cute and playful. The lattice are set with cubic zirconia, so they do look very, very sparkly. There are three settings on the earring jackets, and I usually love wearing them on the second hole, just so the jacket will sit right under my ear loop. I usually wear my hair straight like this, so I think I will wear the earring jacket on this side and just wear the pearl stud on the other side. I think it makes more of a statement that way. So yeah, I really adore these earrings. I think they go really well with my dressing styles. Next one is this beautiful necklace. This is quite a substantial chain, so I love wearing it just like that without any pendant. It's a bit like a choker because it's quite short, so I think it's quite noticeable unless if you wear a turtleneck. This piece feels really comfortable to wear, especially without the pendant, I really don't notice it all that much. I love that it's simple, but at the same time, it stands out. So on days when you don't feel like putting on too much, but you don't want to look too bare, this will be great. I've been wearing this piece a lot lately. I think this is the kind of jewelry that will go well with any outfits and good for any seasons. Next, let's move on to the luxury handbags I use the least. The first one is this Chanel classic double flap in the size small. This is in the black caviar leather and with gold hardware. I've had this bag for about eight years and because I've not used it that much, it's still looking brand new. This was actually my dream bag when I first started looking into luxury handbags. It was a massive purchase for me, so I did think long and hard before pulling the trigger. This is one of those bags that I adore on other people. I mean, I think it's a really versatile piece. So I really enjoy seeing how other people style this bag with different outfits. But in my own closet, this bag has not been getting a lot of attention from me. I think one reason is because I really prefer handbags with a top handle. And this bag, I feel like the ways I can carry it are a bit limited because I usually carry this bag as a shoulder bag on the single chain. Personally, I don't really like the way it looks on double chain because I think it looks a bit too formal and serious. Occasionally, I do carry this bag as a crossbody bag, but to be honest, the chain is a bit too short for that. In terms of how much this bag can fit, it can fit just a little bit more than a Chanel mini flap. Uh, as you can see, there's not a lot of difference between the two sizes. And with the classic flap, it has a double flap on the inside. So that will limit how much it can fit on the inside. If you're quite new to Chanel, I would recommend to go for the Chanel mini flap. Um, this bag costs about £2,700 at the moment. So it's a lot of money, but it's still £2,000 cheaper than the small classic flap. In terms of cost per wear, I think the mini flap has worked out to be a lot better for me because I've used it a lot more. The second bag I've not been using much is my Hermes Kelly 28 Return. This is in the black togo leather and with gold hardware. It's actually a special order piece, so it does come with the horseshoe stamp. This Kelly 28 is in the exact specifications I asked for, so I really thought I'll use it quite a lot, but sadly that's not the case. 
First of all, I just really prefer the size 25 when it comes to the Hermes Kelly and Birkin bags because I don't usually carry that much. However, I think the size 28 actually looks really nice visually. In fact, I think a Kelly 28 return would look flattering on almost any body frames. Another reason I've not been using this bag that much is because opening and closing the bag is a bit of a hassle. So basically, when I open the bag, the bag will drop and stay open. And I do have to support the bag from the bottom to make sure the key aligns with the buckle to close it. And then I'll have to adjust the straps to straighten up the bag. Even though I've gotten used to maneuvering the bag, I have to be honest, it does put me off using the bag a bit. Between the Kelly 28 Return and the Kelly Cellier 25, I definitely prefer my Kelly Cellier 25. However, if I'm ever offered another Hermes bag, I would choose the Birkin 25 over any Hermes Kelly bags. The next handbag I've not been using much might come as a surprise because this is something I've been using a lot in the past, but in 2020, I've just not been reaching for it. And I'm referring to my Louis Vuitton Speedy Bandolier 25. Um, to be honest, I'm not quite sure why I've not been using this bag much because it is a really good bag. The Damien Ebane is a wonderful material because it is scratch and water resistant, so it's really worry-free. This might look like a small bag, but it can fit so much, including all my basic essentials, a water bottle, an umbrella, iPad mini, and more. So it's really a workhorse. And I love that it comes with the top handles and the shoulder strap is adjustable. So I can carry this bag three ways very comfortably. So just talking about this bag now makes me realize how practical and functional this bag really is. So I think it's probably just a phase I'm going through, uh, but it is a bag I've not been using much in the last 12 months. Next, let's move on to the three luxury handbags I've been using a lot. The first one is my beloved Hermes Birkin 25. I just love this little bag so much because for me, it's perfect every corner. First of all, this is in my favorite black and gold combination. Secondly, this bag is made of Epsom leather, which is fairly easy to look after because it is scratch and water resistant. For me, the Birkin 25 is really easy to use as well because I can just get in and out the bag easily. And when I carry this bag, the top handles kind of restrict the opening of the bag. So I think it's fairly secure. For those of you who are interested in getting a Birkin 25, but you're worried about how much it can fit, a Birkin 25 can actually fit more than the Kelly 28 return. When you look at the side profile of the Kelly bag, it actually tapers from bottom to the top. So you can't really feel this bag to the brim, otherwise the flap will not close. Whereas with the Birkin bag, most people don't close the flap, so the space is actually quite generous. The second bag I've been using a lot is my Louis Vuitton mini pump spring backpack. This is one of my favorite bags. I've had this bag for about four years and I've used it pretty consistently. This bag is just so adorable. I might be a bit biased, but I think this is one of the best designs Louis Vuitton has come out with in the last 10 years. For a little bag, it can actually fit a lot. And I love that it comes with a top handle. In fact, uh, I carry this bag like so quite often. I use this bag for shopping, running errands, going to the park or to the zoo. In fact, this is the bag I go for if I'm in a rush or if I have no idea what to wear. So it's certainly one of my all-time favorites. Personally, I really like the Louis Vuitton Classic Monogram, but I try to stay away from the Vachetta ladder because it is an untreated ladder. So it's quite prone to water stains. So this is perfect for me because it has the Classic Monogram, but without the Vachetta ladder. So for me, this piece is really worry-free. 
Another bag I've been reaching for a lot is my YSL or Saint Laurent clutch bag. I've actually done a review video about this piece, so if you are interested, make sure to check it out. To be honest, I never thought I would be a clutch bag person, but this bag really changed my mind. I think this is a really versatile piece, but it looks especially flattering with casual outfits, which are what I wear most of the time. Because this bag is quite small, it feels really nice to carry. Sometimes I also leave this inside another bag and when I have to drop by somewhere really quickly, I would just grab this rather than carrying a big tote bag for example. Next, I'm just going to quickly show you how much I've got inside this bag. So first of all, I've got my Ray-Ban sunglasses, a sunscreen powder, a hand cream, an iPhone 8 Plus, a pack of tissues, and a small perfume. And then I've got some cash on the side, and I've got some cards on the side as well. So as you can see, it doesn't just look nice, it's actually a very practical piece of clutch bag. I've got this bag at about 20% off on my Teresa, so I paid about £390 and I think that is quite a fair price considering how well made this piece is. There you have it, those are my most and least used luxury handbags. Some of you know I'm always working to curate my wardrobe and I only like to keep the things I use so I've been thinking if I should let go of one of the handbags I've not been using that much and can you guys guess which one it is? Otherwise don't worry, I'll let you know in my next video. So that's it from me, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to share, like and subscribe. I will see you in my next one. Have a nice day.